so grateful for what we feel here this morning. Amen. Amen. And I know God is going to do a great and a mighty work in our midst today. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You know what? When he shows up, things happen. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Every time he ever showed up in the Bible, something was fixed to go down. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. When he came in the flesh, something went down again. Amen. Over and over and over. Hallelujah. And then he told the apostles, he said, you see all these things that I've done? Greater things than these shall ye do. Hallelujah. That, that rocks over to us because we believe and we teach the apostles' doctrine, the doctrine that Jesus gave unto the apostles in that 40 days. Amen. That he was seen to them after he rose out of the grave, before he ascended up into heaven. Amen. He taught them everything they were both to do and teach. Hallelujah. So we preach that same doctrine today. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm grateful to have this young man here beside Brother Williams. I ain't got a visitor card up here, so I don't have a clue who he is, but we're glad you're here. And I will meet you after service. Amen. Leviticus chapter 17. So don't run off. Amen. For the beginning with verse 1, Leviticus chapter 17. <clears throat> And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and unto his sons and to all the children of Israel, and say unto them, This is the thing which the Lord hath commanded, saying, What man soever there be of the house of Israel that killeth an ox or a lamb or a goat in the camp, or that killeth it out of the camp, and bringeth it not unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation to offer an offering unto the Lord before me, before the tabernacle of the Lord, blood shall be imputed unto that man. He hath shed blood, and that man shall be cut off from among his people. To the end that the children of Israel may bring their sacrifices when they offer it in the open field, and that they may bring them unto the Lord, unto the door of the tabernacle, in the congregation, unto the priest, and offer them for peace offerings unto the Lord. And the priest shall sprinkle the blood upon the altar of the Lord at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and burn the fat for a sweet savor unto the Lord, and they shall bring no more offer. They shall no more offer their sacrifices unto devils after whom they have gone a whoring. This shall be a statute forever unto them throughout their generations. Yes. And thou shalt say unto them, Whatsoever man there be of the house of Israel or of the strangers which sojourn among you that offereth a burnt offering or sacrifice and bringeth it not unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation offered unto the Lord, even that man shall be cut off from among his people. And whatsoever man there be of the house of Israel or of the strangers that shall turn among you that eateth any manner of blood, I will even set my face against that soul that eateth blood, and I will cut him off from among his people. Verse 11, For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls, for it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. Hallelujah. Amen. It is the blood. I want to preach this morning just for a little while. I know it was the blood. Yes. Hallelujah. I know it was the blood. Amen. Let's just ask the Lord to help us today. God, we thank you. Lord, we love you, Jesus. We give you glory. Lord, we give you honor today, God. I ask you that you would just move into this house right now, God. Lord, let the anointing of the Holy Ghost settle in this place right now, God. Uh, let there be an anointing. Let your word go forth, God. Under that anointing, God, we'll give you the praise and the glory and the honor in the name of Jesus. Come on, let's thank him right now. Give him a hand clap of praise. I love you. Lord, I worship you, Jesus. I magnify your name, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for your blood, God. In the name of Jesus, you can be seated. Amen. There are many years ago, I think we've even sung it here. In fact, there's an old spiritual. I just simply said, I know it was the blood. Hallelujah. I know it was the blood. Save me. One day when I was lost, Jesus died on that cross. And I know it was the blood that saved me. Hallelujah. I know that for a fact this morning. Amen. I I was born in sin, and I was shaping an iniquity. That's what David said. Amen. And in sin did my mother conceive me. Amen. I, I, you understand, we are all were born in sin. We were all born as sinners. Right, right. Hallelujah. Amen. 
And, and God looked down upon mankind and, and wickedness prevailed upon the earth. Amen. Uh, God created Adam and Eve. And you know the story of the Garden of Eden and how that the wicked one came in the form of a serpent. And, and he beguiled Eve and uh, convinced her to eat of the tree uh, of the knowledge of good and evil. Amen. And immediately the Bible said her eyes were opened because she had fed it to her husband. Amen. Her eyes were open, or their eyes were open, and they immediately knew that they no longer had, amen, that rapport with God that they had always had. Hallelujah. Amen. In fact, the Word of God before then said that, that they would walk in the cool of the evening in the garden with God. Yeah. Amen. They could come boldly into the garden. Amen with God and they would walk with him and they would commune with him and he would commune with them and I don't know how long that went on the Bible doesn't give us a timeline there it may have been months it may have been years we don't know but but for some reason amen all of a sudden the wicked one shows up in the garden and he tries his best to destroy mankind he said if I can just get them to curse God to his face mm. you know what all through the word of God he's tried to do that mm -hmm. Amen. All, all through the word of God. In fact, he went to God. He went He went up to the throne of God one time. And, uh, and the Bible said in Job chapter 1 that uh, and he showed up at the tomb, at the throne. Amen. Uh, in that throne room, he was in there with all the sons of God. And, and, and God looked at him and said, what have you been doing, serpent? Amen. What have you been doing? And he said, well, I've been going to and fro throughout the earth. And he said, well, have you considered? my servant Job. Hallelujah. And, and the devil said, there's no way I can touch him. You've got a hedge around him. Can I tell you this this morning? It pays to live for God. Yes, Hallelujah. If you're putting everything in the living for God that you've got, amen, God will put a hedge around you. Hallelujah. Amen. He will help you keep the demons at bay. He will help you keep the spirits of this world at bay. Amen. You know what it is with us today? Amen. When the devil comes around and he's going to offer you an easier way. Amen. He can look at you and he sees a fence around you literally. Amen. There, there's an encampment around you. Amen. The Bible says the angels of the Lord encamp around those that fear him. Hallelujah. Amen. I, I want us to understand this morning though that when the devil looks at you, if you've been covered by the blood, if you've been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. There's a blood covering over you. And the devil doesn't see the angels. When he looks at you, he sees the blood. That's it. Right. Hallelujah. Because atonement was made for you. Amen. Jesus himself. And that old, that old spiritual that I was quoting you a while ago said, I know it was the blood that saved me. Hallelujah. One day when I was lost, Jesus died on that cross. Hallelujah. Oh, can I tell you that he didn't just do that for me. He did that for all mankind. Hallelujah. When he said it is finished as he hung on that cross and the last drop of blood fell from his body to the ground. Amen. Can I tell you this morning that the angels of God rejoiced because they understood that his blood went backwards through mankind and forgave all the sins of those that have been sacrificing for years and years and years and then it reached ahead. Oh, yeah. Woo, hallelujah. Why did it reach ahead? So that sinful mankind in this day and hour would have a way to escape that sin nature. Hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost here. Yes, sir. Yes. Hallelujah. So, in verse 11 of this chapter, it says the life of the flesh is in the blood. And then it goes on to say, I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. Uh -huh. Atonement refers to a much needed reconciliation between God and man. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Hallelujah. 
In Leviticus 16, we see God's ordinance towards sinful man as he sets the rules for atonement of mankind. The, the Bible's central message is atonement. Yeah. Hallelujah. All the way from Genesis, all the way to the prophecies of Revelation. Yeah. Amen. It is the central theme of the Word of God. God has provided a way for us to come back into the relationship with Him. Uh -huh. You see, it was messed up in the garden. Hallelujah. Amen. It was messed up in the garden. The relationship that Adam and Eve had with God. The relationship where God would just come down and commune with mankind was destroyed in one moment of stupidity. Can I tell you today, many people, amen, destroy that communion with God with one stupid mistake. But can I tell you, I've got a God that has covered you with His blood and you can come back only be brought before the throne of grace. You can come in repentance. You can ask God's forgiveness of your failure, of your faults, of your sins. And God is gracious and just to forgive each of us. Yeah. Why? Because His blood covers a multitude of sin. Hallelujah. All right. Leviticus chapter 16, beginning with verse 29. And this shall be a statute forever unto you, that in the seventh month, on the tenth day of the month, you shall afflict your souls and do no work at all, whether it be the one of your own country or a stranger that sojourneth among you. For on that day shall the priest make an atonement for you to cleanse you that you may be clean from all your sins before the Lord. It shall be a Sabbath to rest unto you. You shall afflict your souls by statute forever. And the priest whom he shall anoint and whom he shall consecrate, consecrate to minister to the priest's office in his father's stead shall make the atonement, shall put on the linen clothes, even the holy garments. And he shall make an atonement for the holy sanctuary. And she, he shall make an atonement for the tabernacle of the congregation and for the altar, and he shall make an atonement for the priest and for all the people of the congregation. Amen. And this shall be an everlasting statute unto you to make an atonement for the children of Israel for all their sins once a year. And he did as the Lord commanded Moses. Now I want you to notice when it starts talking about what all the atonement is going to cover. First of all, it covers the sanctuary. Right. It, it covers inanimate objects. And then he shall make an atonement for the tabernacle of the congregation. And for the altar, he shall make an atonement for the priest. And then for all the people of the congregation. Right. So, you know, in fact, there's some of the scripture, if you go back and you begin to study it out, uh, it talks about when a house gets mildew in it. You know, back then they didn't have insulation like we have now, and their their ball, most of their walls were built out of mud and, and and sticks and straw, whatever. Amen. And so there really wasn't any insulation in there, and so uh, there would be mildew a lot of times. There would be uh, dampness on the walls, and and it would turn into mildew. And so uh, there was even a prescribed, uh, amen, a certain series of ceremonies, amen, that they would do. Uh, to cleanse that house. Hallelujah. I, I want you to understand there's a lot of things in this scripture here this morning that I read to you. Amen. That are showing us. Amen. The Bible said what? Know you not that your body is what? The temple of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Amen. If God in those days, amen, would go in and would they would go and they would do the cleaning ritual of a house. Hallelujah. Amen. But then the Bible said they would clean the tabernacle. Amen. By that blood. They would sprinkle that blood for a cleansing on the tabernacle, on the altar. Amen. On every part of that tabernacle. It was, it was sanctified. It was holy unto the Lord. Amen. You are, amen, the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. This body, the Bible said, is the temple of the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God. So if we are the temple, amen, how much more should the atonement cover us? How much more should there be an atonement, amen, that is made for our flesh to, to come clean with God? Amen. This tabernacle 
Come on. Uh -huh. Has to be cleansed. Yes, it does. And God, God gave ordinances in this chapter. Amen. Back up in the sixth verse of the same chapter we read. Aaron shall offer the bull as a sin offering for himself. And shall make atonement for himself and for his house. And now they were to take a bull. And they were to take some goats. And, and, and so Aaron the high priest. Amen. Would, would sacrifice that bullock for himself. And for his household first. Amen. That ministry has to be clean. Amen. The ministry has to be clean. Amen. We have to make sure that we stand pure and clean and holy before God. Now I understand over the years you've seen all of the ones, amen, that have built a pulpit, that have just done what they wanted to do and kind of ripped the gospel up into shreds to make it fit their agenda. But can I tell you this morning, amen, that there needs to be an anointing, there needs to be a power of God that flows from the pulpit to the people and then from the people back to the pulpit. Amen. That man of God that fills the pulpit has to be clean and pure and holy before God. Hallelujah. I, I wouldn't dare step into this pulpit if without prayer. I wouldn't dare step into this pulpit without consecration. Hallelujah. I, I understand the ramifications of doing that. And I understand, amen, that God is dependent upon this ministry. Amen. Right. That's it. Right. I said, how shall they be saved without a preacher? Uh-huh. Right. How should they preach except they be sent? Right. Hallelujah. Now, so before any other offering, that bull was sacrificed specifically for that man of God and his family. Hallelujah. Next came a goat in Leviticus 16, 15 and 16. Then he shall kill the goat of the sin offering. That is for the people. And bring its blood inside the veil. To do with its blood as he did with the blood of the bull. Sprinkling it over the mercy seat and in front of the mercy seat. Thus he shall make atonement for the holy place. And because of their transgressions. All their sins. Right. Right. He, he said that, that this blood... Just the blood of these goats that, that that priest is sprinkling on that altar, on that mercy seat. Amen. Just because he walks into that holy of holies and he's got that that, that incense with coals from off the altar and, and he walks into that holiest of holies and, and there before the Lord he drops that incense onto those coals and it creates a smoke that covers the mercy seat of the Lord. Amen. Because there's a recognition that the blood he just sacrificed as he sprinkles it throughout that the tabernacle, amen, has been shed for the sins of those people, amen, he understands the fullness of what he's doing, amen, he's not just going through a ritual, amen, he's applying the blood, oh, come on, hear me this morning, he's applying the blood, because that blood has to be there in order to wash away the sins of mankind, the blood has to be there, amen, so that God can one more time push those sins back another year amen and another day of atonement arrives and on that day of atonement the same ritual goes on to push all the sins of the camp of Israel back another year and it continues on and on and on and on that's it it leaves the tabernacle in the wilderness and it moves into the temple that Solomon built. Uh -huh. It didn't change just because they changed places. No. You didn't catch that. It did not change just because Israel changed. There you go. Right. Hallelujah. Right. The blood covers no matter who you are. No matter where you're at, no matter what you've been, no matter what you've done, amen, the blood covers you. Hallelujah. Woo. And so every time 
that they would pick up that, that tabernacle and they would fold it up and, and, and the ritual was done and the, the priest would begin to carry the Ark of the Covenant on their shoulders and, and, and those that were the ones that bore the, the coverings for the tabernacle, they would take the tabernacle apart and, and they would move it to wherever God said to stop for the next stop for a while. And when they would set up that camp, amen, those guys were busy setting up that the covenant was put into place by those high priests and it was set up. Amen. That blood was still there. Amen. That covering was still going to be there. Hallelujah. When it moved into Solomon's temple, into the splendor. Oh, come on, hear me today. And the beauty of that temple. Amen. The most beautiful thing in there was the blood that was sprinkled. I know we look at blood today and we think how gross, how nasty, how ugly it is. Is. But as ugly as it was, it was saving, it was redeeming mankind. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. There's nothing pretty about blood, but there is something beautiful about redemption. Amen. Woo. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's why the Bible said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. You know why? Because he wants us to testify of the delivering power. He wants us to testify of the saving power, of the covering power, of the cleansing power of his blood. Right. So for centuries, it rocked on. For centuries, they would spread that blood out. Amen. Hundreds of years in the temple, Solomon's great temple there in the city of Jerusalem. For hundreds of years, they would make their way on the Day of Atonement up to that temple. They would bring their sacrifice. Their sacrifice would be made. Amen. Their sins were rolled ahead for a year and for another year and for another year. Over and over and over again. Right, brother. You got to understand the blood of bulls and the blood of goats could not forgive sin. There you are. Uh -huh. It could only roll it ahead right. to the next year. But there was more bloodshed. Come on, hear me. There was more bloodshed. There was more bullets. There were more goats that were sacrificed. And it was rolled ahead for another year. And it looked like, you know, you're, you're thinking, I can imagine as they, as they carried their, their sacrifice up to, to the temple, I can imagine what they thought. Oh, come on. How many sins are stacked up this year from the previous years? How many sins are stacked up before God of this people? And, and, and yet they still keep being rolled ahead every year. And rolled ahead every year. Don't you know there were probably some that thought, how long will this go on? How long must this happen? I can tell you how long it did happen. Amen. It happened up until the day that Jesus Christ showed up on the scene. Romans chapter 3 verse 19 said, Now we know that what things soever the law said, it said to them who were under the law that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. Mm. Wow. We're all guilty. Uh -huh. All the sin becomes short of the glory. Hallelujah. We're all guilty. Amen. Every single one of us was born with sin. David said it. Amen. In iniquity, well, did my mother conceive me? I was born in sin. Amen. Shaping in iniquity. And in iniquity did my mother conceive me. I, I, you got to understand, I already had it when I was born. But the sacrifices didn't cover me. Those sacrifices of bulls just rolled in ahead of here. 
It just kept rolling in ahead of here. Amen. But I don't have a bullet to sacrifice. Uh, there's, we don't sacrifice animals on this altar here. Amen. We, we don't bring a goat up here once a year and, and get blood on the carpet and, and then have special cleaners come in and clean it up. No, 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 no. Amen. Can I tell you, that all began to change. It all changed with one bloodshed. Hallelujah. Yeah. Mm -mm. Hallelujah. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For the law is the knowledge of sin. Now, the law just gave them a knowledge of sin. That's right. It didn't redeem sin. That's right, brother. It just gave them a knowledge that they were sinners. That's right. And it helped them to try to do better before next year. <laughs> Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Because I might drop dead before next year's on my hits. That's right. Whew. Don't you know... Now, there were some, I'm sure, that walked carefully. You know, they did not want to do anything to offend God. But then there were those, just like there are today, who could care less about the laws of God and the things of God. Amen. They just went haphazardly. They just did what they wanted to do. Amen. They, but you know what? Amen. If they were to carry, it didn't make no difference how bad they had lived. If they were to carry that sacrifice into the priest in repentance, you know what would happen? Their sins, it didn't matter how bad they had acted that year, how stupid they had got. Their sins would be Rolled ahead another year. Right. Exactly. My God. All right. Therefore, the deeds of the law. Who hell are you? Let me back up here. All right. All right. So, I lost my place here. Y'all just have to forgive me. Okay. So we don't kill goats. We don't kill bullocks. So how does it work for us? Huh. Look what Paul said in Romans 325, for God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. Yeah. So a propitiation. You know what that was? That was a substitute for our sins. That was a covering for our sins. Amen. He he came and he gave his life that I might have life. Right. Right. And, and if you go on to read the word of God, it said, and have that more abundantly. What? Well, yeah. Because you understand, I think I'm living life. You know? Look, look at the world around us. Amen. Their idea of living life, working hard all week, partying on the weekend. I hope I'm serious. I, 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 I work with them. I know. You're right. I'm, I'm on it. Amen. Amen. They, 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 they work all week hard. And, and I've heard them say as they started to leave the, the lows I was working at, well, it's my time now. I'm going to go out tonight and we're going to party. And I'm thinking to myself about the young man, amen, who was sitting in his recliner. I'm just kind of ad-libbing this out. It's not in the Word of God that he had a recliner, okay? So don't go looking for it. <laughs> He's sitting back in his recliner. And he's got his big picture window in front of him. And out in front of those, he sees all these big fields that he's got. Mm -hmm. And he looks over. And he's like, man, everything is coming in. It, it, everything is so perfect. We've got all these crops that are about to hit. And he looks at his wife. And he says, you know what I think I need to do? She said, what's that? He said, you see them barns out there as big as they are. They're not big enough for what I'm doing. Oh, come on. I've got a vision of bigger things than this. And he says, I think I'm going to tear down those barns. And I'm going to build bigger ones. That's it. The best laid plans in this life, if they do not include him. Come on. Woo. If they don't include the Lord. That's right. Because the next scripture said that the Lord spoke and says, Thou fool. Come on. This night, 
Not tomorrow night, not two weeks. You don't have a chance. This night, your soul will be required of you. Well, they said. So you're planning all this life. Yeah, it, it, it bothers this preacher when I see people who come and fill a pew. And the only thing that I know is really on their mind is what can I do to fill my, fulfill myself in this life? What can I do to fulfill myself, to get the money I need, to build the house I want, amen, to buy the car I want to drive, whatever it may be that their goal is in life? Can I tell you the first goal you should have is coming under the blood? That's it. The very first goal that you have in life should be, I'm going to fall on your chest with repentance, God. I'm going to fall in your arms with mercy. I want you to have mercy on me because I'm a sinner. That should be the very first thing. Yes. Amen. I'm not saying it's wrong to have a business. I've had one myself. I'm not saying it's wrong. Amen. But you've got to get your priorities straight. Amen. Ah, come on, hear me. You better listen to this preacher today. Amen. When, when, we, when we can do our thing and satisfy our flesh. Amen. And somewhere down the line, walk right past. Oh, come on, let me tell you what you're doing. You're walking through the blood of Jesus. Right. You are. Every single person in this house has got to pass the cross on the way to eternity. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Every person in this world will pass the cross on their way to eternity. They will walk through or they will be justified by the blood shed on Calvary. Come on now. My God. You know, that's why this preacher is so hard on folks that play church. Come on. Because I realize the end result. you, you got to understand. There, you know, I, I've heard them say there, there's a, a heaven to gain. You know, but there's also a hell to shun. Amen. Come on, there's also a hell waiting on those. Oh, come on, hear me. You might come to church and you might justify yourself. Amen. And I'm speaking to those on camera today as well. If you're watching this on the internet today, you might go to church. Amen. But many times we justify ourselves by just saying, hey, I've attended church or I've listened to it online. I know the scriptures. If you know the scriptures, then you need to do the scriptures. Yeah. Alright, let's go on further. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 11. But Christ being come and high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle. Remember what we said was the tabernacle walk on, remember? Not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, not of this building here. Neither, this is talking about Jesus, by the blood of goats and calves. But by his own blood, woo, Come on now. he entered in, to, in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Right. Come on, do you, you, you recall the scripture? The, the Bible said he's hanging on that cross, and, and the words came from his lips It is. The Bible said there was a great earthquake. And then it records something. It says that the veil, now you gotta understand, this veil was some six inches thick. That's pretty thick material. 30 foot high, 60 foot long, approximately. In Solomon's temple. Now, I just read you, let me read that again, you didn't catch this. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once. Where? Into the holy place. Okay. He's hanging on the cross. He said, it is finished. His head drops because his spirit left his body. 
immediately there was an earthquake. The earth was just so shook up of what was going on. There was an earthquake. But at the same exact moment, the Bible said that the veil in the temple was rent or torn from the top to the bottom. Not from the bottom to the top, so man didn't do it. It was torn from the top to the bottom. Right. You, you, you heard what the scripture said? Yeah. Right. By his own blood. That blood, that last drop of blood. Uh -huh. That last drop of blood that dropped from his body that made him give up the ghost. He entered in once into the holy place. Right. Do you understand what's going on? He, he's saying it's finished. And, and that last drop of blood is falling slowly to the ground. And when it hits the ground, there's an earthquake. And when he hits the ground, all of a sudden his spirit is gone. It's in the temple. His spirit splits that. Oh, come on, hear me. you got to understand the reason that veil was there. Because nobody could come into the, into the throne room where he lay, where he sat. He was on the mercy seat. He hovered on the mercy seat. But nobody could go in there except the priest. Right. But now, he enters in there. He rips it from top to bottom. The veil is open now. Whosoever will, let him come boldly before the throne of grace. Woo! Hallelujah. So now, amen, it's not blood of bulls and goats. But now it's a supreme sacrifice that has made the difference. He's entered into the holy place himself. He's made himself an atonement for us. Amen, that we can have life. And that more abundantly. Amen. Yeah. Hey, My God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Let's give him glory. Yeah. Come on, let's worship the Lord. Come on, let's thank him. We really are thanking him. Let's thank him. Come on, don't go through a ritual right now. Let's thank him, my God. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for everything. Thank you for giving us life, Lord. Glory. Thank you for becoming life to us, Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. All right. So in verse 13, he said, For if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of a heifer sprinkle on the unclean, sanctify them to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? Yeah. Yeah. He said he's not only going to clean your spirit, he's going to affect your mind. Yeah. That's it. Right. You're not going to think the same way you used to think. Hallelujah. Now let me go a little further. <laughs> for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament. That by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first state testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Amen. We, we still have that in life. We call it the last will and testament. Got it? That's what he's talking about. But in order for that last will and testament to be of effect, the guy that wrote it has to die. It's of none effect until he's gone. Amen. So, a testament is a force after men are dead. Otherwise, it is of no strength at all while he's alive. Amen. He's got to die. Right. Whereupon, neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. For when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and of goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the book and all the people, saying, This is the blood of the testament which God hath enjoined unto you. Moreover, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry. Look at this in verse 22. And almost all things are by the law purged with blood. I like this part. And without shedding of blood is no remission. Lord have mercy. Did, did you hear what you said? Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission. So why don't we sacrifice goats? I ain't gonna sacrifice one unless I'm gonna have a barbecue. <laughs> 
Right. Hallelujah. You know why? Because he was the testator. He had to die for that testament to begin to take force. Whoo, hallelujah. That testament was of none effect until the testator died. Amen. When he's hanging on that cross and saying, it is finished. You know what? It opened a brand new book of life. Hallelujah. Amen. All those sins that had been rolled ahead a year for years and years and centuries. Now all of a sudden, when he said, it is finished, and his spirit left the body. Guess what? All those sins were forgiven. That last drop of blood. All of those sins were forgiven. Romans 5, verse 8. But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. It didn't say Christ died for the Jews. No. It didn't say Christ died for the Romans. It said for us. The word us encompasses every single person in this world. Hallelujah. You talk about a big feat. That was an awesome feat. But now the testator has died. And so now the testament is open. Whosoever will, let him come and take freely of the waters of life. Hallelujah. You know why you can take freely of the waters of life? Because blood was shed. Woo. Not the blood of bulls and goats. But the blood of a spotless lamb. The blood of one who walked through, through his death. The one who, when he's in the garden praying, sweated great drops of blood because of the stress of what that physical man was under. Understanding what he was facing on Calvary. Understanding what the next day would bring him. Amen. Understanding that he is the one standing in the place of redemption of all mankind. Right. For without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. God commanded his love toward us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood. Okay? We're justified by his blood. We shall be saved from wrath. Yeah, I don't know if you know much about God's wrath, but you don't want to find out. I promise you that. <laughs> Hallelujah. Exactly right. I, I ask, ask them Yehudi back in the Old Testament. Hey Amen. Who thought they could just get away with whatever? You know? Mm -hmm. Remember Korah? Right. Moses goes to God and he says, These crazy people. He said, you, you see what these people are doing? The, and you know what God says? They're not doing that to you. They're doing that to me. You're just a mailman. Uh -huh. <laughs> they're doing that to me. <laughs> you know, they're, they're, they're aiming their wrath at you, but their wrath is really not to you because you're speaking my words. Their wrath is really aimed at me. Right. Wow. But yet that same God came and took on flesh and dwelt among us. How holy. Amen. We be all his glory. The glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And then he walks up Calvary. Uh -huh. And he lays down with a back so badly beaten that his intestines more, more likely were showing through his back and his kidneys and all those things. It just literally stripped the body of its flesh. And his back was so badly beaten, they laid him down on that old rough cross, and they nailed through his wrist into that cross those big Roman spikes. Uh -huh. 
And then they did the same to his feet. And they stood that cross up. And when they dropped into that hole. Come on. The end of the new beginning was starting. The end of the old man. The end of the old path was ending and a new testament oh hallelujah a new testament was about to take place amen you understand when he died amen when he shed his blood for you and I amen it was a brand new testament a brand new day we did no longer come on hear me from that point forward it was not necessity amen to bring bulls and goats how many of y'all be saved today y'all have to bring one in here Hallelujah. Most of us don't even own a bull or goat, maybe a dog. All right. Verse 10, for if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Look what Ephesians 2, 8 through 22 said. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Wherefore, remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made, with hand, made by hands, that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope, and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh. How? By the blood of Christ. Right. I used to be out there. I used to be of this world. Oh, yeah, I went to church. You know, I, I, I did the ritual, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We still do rituals, believe it or not. Some folks just go to church because they're supposed to go to church. It's become a ritual in their life. But that's not what this is all about. Amen. Just showing up for church. Amen. Just, just following the ritual. It's not what it's all about with God. No, 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 no. All right, so, all right. But now, in Christ Jesus, you were sometimes were afar off are now made nigh by the blood of Christ. So his blood has brought you closer. Hallelujah. Right. Now, for he is our peace who have made it both one and have broken down, look at this, the middle wall or partition between us. There was always that partition between man and God. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Remember the remember the veil in the temple? There was a petition between man and God. There was, there was no way that we could access him. We did not have access until the cross. Right. My Lord. This yeah. is powerful. But the blood was shed on Calvary. He was the supreme sacrament. Now, I know I'm preaching to the choir this morning. Y'all all looking at me like a mule looking at a new gate. I understand that. Y'all heard this a thousand times. But I, you know what? I'm trying to help you. It has never really registered with you. Come on. Come on. Come on. We go through our rituals as good little Pentecostals. Uh -huh. Yeah, we got rituals. Amen. There's two songs and an offering. Let's preach or three songs and an offering. Let's preach whatever it might be in whatever church. Amen. But there's rituals. Amen. And many times we go through the whole week and we never even speak to God. Right. Okay. Somebody said, ouch. Amen. Now, for he is our peace that made, made both one and has broken out the middle wall petition between us. That's, you know, there's no petition there now. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in, over, in the ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man, so make him peace, that he might reconcile both unto God in one body, by the cross, having slain the, the enmity thereby. Look at this. And came and preached peace to you which were afar off, and to them that were nigh. For through him we both have access 
by one spirit unto the Father. And look at this, verse 19. Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints. And of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation, woo, hallelujah, of the apostles and the prophets, Jesus Christ Himself being the chief cornerstone. If you were here a few weeks ago, I was talking about the cornerstone, remember? He's become the head of the corner, the cornerstone. Uh, the way buildings were built back then, and I, I've done a lot of research on this, I've, I've Followed uh, uh, archaeologists and, and that have been uncovering David's stuff that was buried over there. And anyway, now and one thing in the construction of a building, hey Amen. They didn't have all the tools we got nowadays. They didn't have a laser level. They could just shoot down there and get a line. They, they didn't have all that stuff. Hey Amen. So what they would do, they would get this cornerstone. Now the cornerstone was worked on and worked on and worked on and worked on until they were for sure that it was perfectly square. It was plumb on every angle. It was perfect in every way. Or it didn't set as the cornerstone. You know why? Because the entire building was going to be built off of that stone. Hmm. They would set that stone in place. And then the rest of the building was built from that stone using its square properties. Using, uh, come on, hear me. You got to understand, it was perfect. Hallelujah. It was made perfect. They didn't set it unless it was perfect. Or can I tell you, it says that Jesus Christ has become the head of the corner. Hallelujah. He is the chief cornerstone. He is perfect in every way. Everything about him is perfect. And can I tell you today, the only way to build your spiritual house uh, is to have him as the head of the corner. That's it. And he loved us that much that he came and he gave his life and shed his blood that we might have life and that more abundantly in the last verse in whom all the building you and you and you and you, fitly framed together, groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are built together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. Mm. This is the habitation of God. You're the habitation of God. That's why it's so important that there was bloodshed. So that you could have that life. You could have it more, the Bible said you can have it more abundantly. Hallelujah. There is nothing like living for God. As a young person in a small town church, I went to church Because my parents went to church. <laughs> to be honest with you. Amen. I was raised in church. From day one all the way through, I was raised in <laughs> Now, was I a good little boy? No. I will lie to you. Amen. Did that keep me from having bad thoughts or doing stupid stuff? No. <laughs> no. I got in trouble. Several times, not with the law, just with my parents, that was enough. Amen. Probably would have been easier if I got in trouble with the law. <laughs> Amen. But you know what? God looked at me. God smiled on me. Just like he did me. And he said, you know what? I would like to live in that. I would like, oh boy. <laughs> when he looked at us. Think about this. Brother Williams, when he looked at me, and, and probably when he looked at a lot of the people in this congregation, he thought, what in the world am I doing? <laughs> no, he didn't think that. He didn't think that. You know what he did? He said, you know what? I love you 
this much. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I love you this much. And he stretched out his arms and let them drive nails through his arms. And he hung on that cross until the last drop of blood that could escape that body did. And he gave that blood for me and you. There's a story I heard years ago. It's actually with a song, I think, but it still rings in my mind from time to time. And in this song, he describes this man standing before the Lord. And he said, as I'm standing there, there was a big screen. Now, this is just an imagination of a songwriter. And he said, I'm standing in heaven, and I'm standing before the Lord, and there's a big screen flashing scenes of my life. And he's like, oh, don't show that one, don't show that one. Oh, God, oh, God, no, there's too many people here. Don't, no, God, no. But all these scenes are flashing by. And he said, all of a sudden, there's this red spot appears on the screen. And it just begins to cover all those things that were the sins of my life. It, this big red spot just begins to spread out on this screen until it finally covers the whole screen. And then the screen turns white. Mm. <laughs> Hallelujah. This is the only place where you can take red blood and apply it to a dark black life that has no life and end up turning it as pure as the driven snow. <laughs> when we come before him in repentance and we say, God, I've not been a good person. God, I've made a wreck out of my world. God, I've messed up so many things in my life and I really need you, God. When we come with that brokenness and with that attitude, you know what God does? All of a sudden, amen, there's a drop of red that just covers you. And it begins to spread out. And before it's over with, God says, what sins are you talking about? I don't even see any sins. That's it. And then all of a sudden, his spirit comes in. And you begin to speak in a heavenly language. Hallelujah. You begin to speak as the Lord gives you utterance. Amen. And you're speaking in another tongue. And his spirit has cleansed you. Oh, come on, you may, it didn't make no difference what kind of a bad boy or bad girl you were. It made no difference how tough and rough you had been in this life. God could care less about that at that moment in time. The only thing he sees is a soul that needs deliverance. And that drop of blood, that one drop of red blood, as he looks at you, he sees his blood just spreading out over your life and your world. And all of a sudden, he sees you emerging from that red blood. And as the Holy Ghost comes in and you begin to speak in his language, he sees you become white as the driven snow. Hallelujah. Because his blood covers a multitude of sins. Can we stand right now? Let's just give him glory. Come on, feel the Holy Ghost here. Why don't we reach out to him right now? My God, I love you, Jesus. I thank you for your presence, God. God, I give you glory and honor and praise today, God. Come on, church. Come on, church. Are we all asleep? Are we dead? Or what's wrong with us? Come on, we need to respond to the Spirit. We need to, oh, come on. If you sit down on him, he will sit down on you. It will not be good. Let's respond to the Spirit of God. Come on. Jesus, we love you. Lord, I thank you for loving us enough, God. Lord, that you took on flesh. That you shed your blood. And that one drop of that blood was shed for me, God. Lord, that I could be covered. Lord, that my sins could be forgiven, God. Lord, I thank you for redemption. I thank you for regeneration. I thank you, Lord, for being able to touch your spirit, God. I thank you for what your spirit does in us, God. Thank you for the cleansing. that I can have life and that more abundantly, God. 
Lord, we're so grateful today for your presence, God. In la bakata ya loko ya shata leka sata la la bahai. Why don't we just gather around the front right now just